Hello! This is the third and last part about fish parasites you can find on the microscope after a skin scraping. Two episodes have already published on our channel. You can find links to them in the video description. This part deals with multicellular parasites of the skin and gills. The class of flatworms Monogenea or monogenetic flux comprises of about 2200 species all of which are parasites of fish, amphibians, and other aquatic animals. Various representatives of this group can be found in scrapings from the body and gills of fish. One important characteristic of these parasites is their high host specificity, meaning that the monogenetic fluke species only parasiticize one species of fish or sometimes, but rarely, on a few closely related fish species. Other fish species will have different species of worms. To the contrary, it is not uncommon that a fish species is a host for several different fluke species. However, these parasites share a common body design that allows for their identification. Let's look at some of them in more detail. Skin flukes. The genus Gyrodactylus or skin flukes has over 500 species. The worm's body is elongated, flattened, and up to half millimeter long. At the posterior end there is an attachment disc, equipped with two large central hooks, and several smaller hooks, arranged in a circular pattern around the disc. The anterior end of the body usually has two lobes. Skin flukes are viviparous hermaphrodites so it is often possible to observe the development of second-generation larva inside the body of one worm. Gyrodaculus can undergo a significant increase in population density, covering the entire body of the fish. These parasites pose a particular threat to young fish, often leading to mass mortality in aquariums and ponds. Macrogyrodactylus simentiensis is a representative of the genus Macrogyrodactylus that parasitizes on the body of Polypterus. It differs from the typical Gyrodactylus primarily in its size, reaching about 1 mm in length, which allows it to be seen even with the naked eye or using a magnifying glass. The attachment disc also contains two large hooks, but 14 small hooks are arranged on one side rather than in a circular pattern. Macrogyrodactylus are also viviparous parasites, with up to three generations of larvae developing within their bodies. Fish infected with skin flukes become lethargic, displaying an abundance of mucus on their skin often develop damage to the skin and fins and scrape against the decorative items in the aquarium. In addition, the blood vessels become visible on the light-colored body of the fish. This is usually characteristic of goldfish. Gill flukes The group of gill flukes, consisting of several hundred species, also belongs to the class Monogenea. As the name suggests, these worms parasitize on the gills of fish. However, gill flukes are often found not only in scrapings from fish gills, but also in scrapings taken from the gill cover or pectoral fins of fish. When the parasites multiply in large numbers, they frequently extend beyond the gills. In contrast to viviparous skin flukes, gill flukes are egg-laying parasites. Gill flukes belong to different genera, different size and differ in the structure of their attachment disc. Dactylagyrus Trianharatus Stedicleitrum Urocleidoides Diclibotrium All gill flukes cause respiratory problems in fish. Infected fish exhibit widely open gill covers rapid breathing, and they become either lethargic or stressed. Gill flukes pose a significant danger to young fish and often lead to mass mortality. 
skin trematode. Flatworms of the genus Transversa trema primarily parasitize marine fish species, although there are also species that affect freshwater fish. They are not commonly found in scrapings from the skin of the fish, but if you come across a similar butterfly-like worm with a pattern design, you will recognize it as this parasite. Fish lice the fish lice parasites of the genus Argulus can reach considerable sizes, ranging from a few millimeters to 3 cm, making them noticeable even to the naked eye and removable with tweezers from the fish's body. However, in fish scrapings, you may find young Argulus that have not reached their adult size and are therefore not visible to the naked eye. In their juvenile stage, Argulus feed on the mucus and skin cells of fish. As they mature, they puncture the host's skin and feed on its blood. However, this is not the only danger posed by this parasite. Local inflammation and hemorrhages occur at the site of the puncture. The secretion of Argulus, which enters the wound through its proboscis, has a toxic effect on the fish. Additionally, it can act as a carrier of dangerous bacteria and protozoa, such as Aramonas and Trypanosoma, which are blood parasites. This ends our three-part series about the main external parasites of aquarium fish. Which parasites have you recognized? And which ones have you seen for the first time? Write about them in the comments below. Share this video. I am Katya, ichthyologist and hydrobiologist at Ashe Labs. Thanks for watching and enjoy your pet fish.